Today we're in Bergen Beach, Brooklyn to visit a unique church in a very unique neighborhood. Hi, I'm Anthony Mangano and welcome back to a new season of City of Churches. Today, today we're in Bergen Beach, Brooklyn, a neighborhood, believe it or not, that was once more popular than Coney Island and even Disneyland. Today we're going to visit St. Bernard's Church in the Bergen Beach section of Brooklyn. Now, Bergen Beach was originally a small island in Jamaica Bay just off the coast, which is now considered Canarsie, Brooklyn. Now in the 1600s, Bergen Beach got its name from an early Norwegian settler named Hans Bergen. Now he arrived here in 1633 and he purchased the island from the Canarsie Indians of the Lenape tribe. Now later in the 1850s, the area was officially designated Bergen's Island and it was listed that way on the documents and maps. By the 1890s, the island's Bergen House, well it had become a popular summer resort developed by the owner of the Chicklets Chewing Gum Company, Thomas Adams, and by theater owner, Percy Williams. Now soon after they built a popular and successful amusement park here, it was the Disneyland of its time, with rides, games, attractions, food, a dance hall, a casino, a roller skating rink, and a theater, all located along a half mile long boardwalk. For many years, Bergen Beach Amusement Park was considered a high class version of Coney Island. Despite its years of success, it was forced to close in 1917 due to the lack of improved public transportation. Even today, there are still no subway lines that come down here to Bergen Beach, a really populated area. They have a few bus lines, including, get this, the number 41 bus, which got its name from the old 41 trolley. At least they kept the name. Now in 1918, there was a massive landfill project that joined Bergen Island with the rest of Brooklyn. But the area didn't really start to develop to the 1960s. Now this area really developed. I mean, you could still have some area back here that's still undeveloped, but I'm gonna show you some great landmarks in this neighborhood. So come on and follow me, it's really cool. Come on. You know, years ago, they had a trolley system here and it was called the 41. Things changed. We still have a bus service, but now it's called the B41. How ironic, the bus is right here and we caught it. As it rolls, this is the only bus that comes down here now. There's no subway systems or anything, but we've got the B41 in memory of the 41 trolley. That's pretty cool. We got a lot more stuff, follow me. Well, here we are on Avenue M, Brooklyn and Bergen Beach. Now, I told you this area developed in 1960. But what's amazing to me is one of the biggest landmarks in this area is Landy's Pork Store. And this was established in 1958 here in Bergen Beach. This place is so popular that people that lived here moved away and have now come back because they still get their products in here because it's so cool. Come on inside. This place is amazing, okay? It's been around here since 1958. I mean, look how cool it is. Being Italian, it's like being home in here. Come on, follow me, look at all this stuff. I mean, you got a lot of guys working here. People come here from all over that lived here, moved away, like I said, and now have come back. And as they're shopping, you can see all the stuff they got in here. There's such landmark stuff. It's amazing. And if you look on the wall there, look, you got pictures of Frank Sinatra, Jimmy Kimball, Burt Reynolds. These are all people that have been friends of the owner. This is a really cool place, and I'm really thankful to the owner that he made us come in here. And let me show you some other places here on Avenue N. So come on, we're gonna go back outside again. Well, that was amazing, huh? I'm actually starving just from being in there looking at all that food. Now, this place has been here since 1958 and is a landmark for this area. Monsignor Jamie comes here. He also likes to go there at Sea Tide. That's the newest fish market. It's been here a few years. It's now its own landmark. There's such great places over there. There's an eye parlor over there that's been here for a while. Long time. There's continental hairstyling. 
Now that's been there for, oh my God, 50, 60 years. There's Palermo's Bakery that's been here for years. We have Pastoza's. Right over there is Pinocchio's Restaurant. Bergen Beach is a really cool place. I told you a lot of great things here. Follow me. You know, last year, when I became the host of City of Churches, I took you on a tour of my first church, where I grew up in, and I was an altar boy, St. John the Evangelist. Today, well, today we're gonna take you on a tour of my new church, St. Bernard, right here in Bergen Beach. So we're gonna go inside and meet my friend, Monsignor Jamie. You probably saw him on Breaking Bread. This is a really cool church, a lot of great things to see. So come on, follow me, there's a lot of good stuff in here. Hi, and welcome back to City of Churches. Today, today we're in Bergen Beach at St. Bernard's Church and we're here with Monsignor Jamie. Monsignor, I want to thank you for inviting us and our audience in City of Churches to come here. Now, I like this church for a reason. I think so. You know, my old church when I was a boy, we did my first special, the first introduction to this show was called it's at St. John Evangelist. And we did a big special about that. Now, I'm at St. Bernard's, which this is my parish. And I became my parish after I married my wife, Teresa. Now, the whole Bichon family have gone here. They've been married here, except me, I didn't get married. They got married here, communion confirmed. They went to the church. So there's a big history here for us. There's roots here. And there's roots. <laughs> and, I, and I have to tell you, since you took over this church, uh, it is amazing what you did here. And we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get on these key points here because I, I've seen so many things that you've done, and I have to tip my hat to you, that you've improved it so much. And so many people have come back here as a tribute to you. I have to say that to you because you did this. Well, I didn't you, do it alone. Well, I you a had a big guy upset, but <laughs> not alone. I can't name everybody there, but you were the, the captain of the ship, so to speak. With God guiding you, you can't go wrong. I'm gonna hit you on a bunch of questions that I know you're gonna be able to answer. We're gonna have a little fun with it. Great, great. Why was it named after St. Bernard? St. Bernard was um, a monk. He lived in the 1100s, and he was a Cistercian monk who became the abbot uh, in Clairvaux, and that's where St. Bernard of Clairvaux gets its name. The first pastor was the one who picked out, usually when you're assigned to a parish, you help in the picking out of the, the church's name. And you, of course, with consultation from the bishop. That makes was, sense. That might have been his favorite right. saint. They named it after him. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, let's go back to the beginning of this parish, and about why the church was needed in this neighborhood in 1960. What, I mean, what was happening around here? Well, this neighborhood, uh, Mill Basin, and this, we're in Bergen Beach, but the, uh, the parish incorporates Mill Basin as well. This was all swampland. There were, you know, uh, there were horse um, stables here, and there were farms. So really, Ralph Avenue was the cutting point, the end point, and Mary Queen of Heaven uh, was the parish that incorporated this whole community. But as this neighborhood started to develop and they started building homes here and people started moving over here, they felt the need for a new parish and the parish was created in 1961. And- about the year I was born. <laughs> <laughs> I know, don't tell nobody. And it was uh, uh, created, uh, Bishop McIntackett created this parish and uh, uh, Father Kenny was the first I pastor here. Kenny. And uh, Dino Zini. Uh, he was uh, the associate here. And they were the founding priests of this parish. And uh, the first thing that they had to do was to uh, create a place of worship. And they erected a, ta a tent right on this very spot. Uh, I have some pictures of this. I'm gonna show you the bigger one so we can show this to, that is amazing to me. Yes, this is the tent. And uh, it's like on this very spot where we are. It was more or less facing uh, more Veterans Avenue, uh, mm -hmm. we're now facing East 69th Street, but it was on this very spot, and that's where people celebrated Mass. And they celebrated Mass until uh, they broke ground uh, right away on the school building that also would have 
a chapel as part of it. Here's what I was going to say. I was going to show this to the audience first. This is what Monsignor was talking about. There's, right. the, there's the school. Yes. And next to it is the church, uh, the, the tent. Right, right. Now that tent, um, the original tent was uh, put there, but then it moved across the street when they were building the school. So, I mean, really, the school construction started in 1963, and it was put up in almost 13 months. Wow, that's, that's and amazing. And in uh, September of 1964, the school opened, and, that, and that's when they had the chapel added onto it, and then they moved inside the school uh, in 1964. So they celebrated Mass here, you know, for almost three years. Wow. And it was amazing. It really was amazing. Well, I, I, I look at... I look at this is just amazing. I'm going to show it to you, and then I'm just showing the audience. This is, this is amazing. This is a tent with an altar. I mean, you, yes. it's just, it's uh, mind-boggling. And look at the wooden chairs, and yeah, it's uh, and, amazing. And people came to worship. And, yeah. and you could see when they would have the outdoor procession. Yes. Which, it just amazes me that how, when, you wanted, when people wanted to go to church, they went to church. Yes. There was no excuse, because here they are walking on yes. mud. And, you know, and people got mad. You can see the uh, platforms on the floor, yeah. the wood uh, planks on the floor. And I, I think this is adorable. This is, I believe this is a communion. First Holy Communion. They're walking inside the school to get into school. And um, they celebrated Mass in that school chapel for almost 25 years, about 21 wow. years, because this church here uh, was then erected. Um, and we just celebrated the 25th anniversary uh, of, of this church here. Uh, in, in this year, 2014. So in, in 1989 uh, uh, is when they opened the church here. Wow. And we just celebrated the 25th anniversary this past September of the church. Now, and uh, believe it or not, this church was erected uh, to replicate the tent. That's what I was going to ask you. Yes. And I didn't know that, and I had no idea yeah. until now, yeah. until you well, said Well, the that. big skylight was, to, it was supposed to represent the original tent, yeah, to let the light in. And when you look at, when you look at that picture, Right. You could actually see, right. if you look up, you right. see it. And, and, and even and the shape of it. Yes, it's almost the shape in looks the, like a in the tent, shape that which it is, was. to me, is fascinating. Right. And you mentioned about the, the swampland. The church is built on pilings. There's all pilings. Wow. We have no basements here in the school or in the parish house. There's I no, didn't know that. No basements. No. I had no it's idea. It's all on pilings. It's amazing. Yeah. And this was another great shot. I mean, this, this, this was amazing that everyone was outside. Right. Yes, because when they had larger masses, like for the opening of the school, and don't forget in those days when they opened up the schools, you know, they had two of every classes. And uh, they were here, and they had to celebrate masses outside, feast days and holy days, weather permitting. It's a, these pictures are worth a million dollars. Is this tell, picture always tells the story. Yes. This was the original construction of the steeple. Right. The bell tower the bell out tower. there, and it's, it replicates uh, some of the churches in, in Italy, uh, some really? of the bell towers, yes. Um, you know, many of the churches in Italy, they have a separate bell tower uh -huh. and, you know, the bell, we have a bell tower. Many churches just have the bell on the top of the, the steeple of the church, mm -hmm. but we have a separate bell tower, which is, um, you know, very common uh, throughout the churches in Europe. And, and talking about the, the bell tower. Yes. It's amazing. This you know? is the bell tower in here. St. Bernard's right. Uh, Look at that, right in front, front. of it. And uh, it is a beautiful bell tower. And in fact, uh, during the the week, you know, obviously the bell uh, uh, chimes, and you can have uh, the bells chime in in memory or in honor of someone every week. In the early days, we, we kind of hit on it, what was involved in building this church. I must, they must have had major, uh, to contribute to this, to build this is amazing. Well, I mean, don't forget, in the, in the late 80s, when, when this church was opened, uh, most of the churches were already completed throughout our diocese. And uh, there weren't too many churches that were built during that time. It took, like they um, built the other churches years before, they went door to door, knocking on doors. They had a committee and they went on to door to door and people made pledges and made donations. And they were able to raise the funds uh, to, to build this beautiful church. A modern church, it's not one of your, you know, Gothic churches or traditional churches, but it was a modern church. And what I like about the church is the layout because when you're in the sanctuary celebrating Mass, you feel that the people are all around you. And they're not just in front of you. There's, you don't feel that separation between the people of God and the altar. 
and, and the priest. And uh, during uh, liturgies, the children come up around the altar, as oh, you I've see. I've seen that, sure. You always and, bring them up, it's uh, great. You know, when you have celebrations and you, you're blessing people and anniversaries, you call them up here. There's a lot of room, a lot of space. Well, I see, I've seen what you've done here. I mean, with everybody helping them, like you said. But the statues yes. you brought in, Yes, there. I mean, we have a little saint's chapel over there. I know, there. I go in there like And there's candles. all the little statues of many saints. But, you know, I, I feel a church has to have some, you know, traditional statues. Yes. And in here, you know, our Blessed Mother and St. Joseph, and actually, they were uh, in the sanctuary, but they were on the floor. I mean, and uh, so I raised them up and I put them up there. We put a beautiful portrait of the Divine Mercy, which is a very popular devotion. Oh, yes. Uh, Divine Mercy Sunday, the first Sunday after Easter. Also, people in this parish have a, a, a great devotion to Padre Pio. Yeah, uh, I, I, I saw that. Yeah, I've seen that. And, and then St. Uh, Jude. There's a society uh, in this parish that comes from Italy, and they have a great devotion to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. I see what you've brought back. I saw the baby grand piano. I remember well, that. That just that came this Christmas. Christmas. I remember <laughs> when, we, when you were talking about that and it came. And I think it's beautiful. It adds to the church. I love the little chapel that I see mass in in the morning. You know, yes. it's, it's very accommodating. And it's, it's like a mini version of this one. We put in these dividers when you the, come in. Yes, that was never there before. And When I, you I, walked in, you were right in the middle of the church. It is a gathering space for liturgies and also that when you're preparing, when people are in here before mass, when the music is playing, they can pray and meditate, and you don't have that noise factor. That's true too. So, yeah. you know, when people come in, church should, you know, it's where the community gathers. And if the community cannot talk to one another and greet one another, you know, why have a community? So that gives that opportunity where people can see each other, greet each other outside the, you know, the main body of the church and not really disturb the people that are praying in here. So when you go through those doors, then you know you're in, you know, it's a time to pray, it's a time to be quiet, and you won't have all that noise well, going on. That's beautiful, and I noticed that you took all the fences down that closed in the rectory and around the church. You opened it up. We have beautiful grounds here, and why not, you know, uh, let people see them? By putting up the fence, it's like keeping people out. We want to make people feel welcome. And we also have a big yard uh, next to the parish house yes. and uh, we clean that up and uh, we put a big deck out there so now on Sundays uh, after mass we'll have ice cream Sunday where all the children come in and get an ice cream Sunday. Uh, we have Father's Day and Mother's Day. We have an Easter egg hunt. During the summer months we have outdoor movie night. We put a big screen outside and we give out we don't charge, we open it. We give out potato chips and pretzels and, and, and soft drinks for the kids. And they, they bring their blankets and their chairs and they watch the movies. Uh, it, it's just a great, great place. We have a, an Oktoberfest where the kids go pumpkin picking out there. And it's just a, 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 well, what a fun place. What you've done is you brought the community back. And uh, I see it because I know after all the years and it's a totally different church. Well, it's nice because there's a lot of young people here and young families here. You know, every parish is different and you have to, you know, see what the needs of the parish are and try to, you know, meet those needs. And in this parish with a lot of young people and a lot of children, you have to have activities and you have to give the children a reason to come to church. And, you know, it's not that you're putting on a show. You're not, you know, they're not getting the wrong message. You got to get them in the door. Once you have the children in the door, they leave here with a message. It's better than them not coming at all and Absolutely. have no message. Absolutely. You know, some people are critical. Oh, Monsignor, it's too noisy. The kids are all running around. Well, what did Jesus say? Let the children come to me. And not for anything, you bring the children, you bring the parents. Absolutely. And, it's a family of, you know, family we're of very, parents. especially our family mass, uh, we're very children f friendly. The, the children sit, they march in, they march out, they I sit around you the, have altar. Them right up on the altar. You make it more. Uh, enjoyable and I find it amazing. To go back to a couple of things, when we go to these churches I'm always fascinated by the stained glass because I always think it's such artistic work goes into it. Now we know about the tent look. Can you explain? Well there's two windows here. The window over here um, you know I read about it and they said that's supposed to be the eye of God and God is looking down 
upon us, okay. watching us and guiding us. And the windows over here um, represent the breath of God, the wind of God. I see that. And it's the sending down of the Holy Spirit. The window over here in the chapel, there are seven window, windows in there, supposedly to represent the seven sacraments. Oh. All right. And then this here, and when you look at it, it's in the form of a dove, you know, the Holy Spirit coming down, you know, upon us, Jesus, you know, and after he and, was baptized. And it's amazing because you could see the design, the artistic design, when you, now that you explain it, you get it. Very you modern. Know. And uh, we opened up also the two side gardens. That's what I was going to ask you about. I found, I remember when you were doing it, I found the beautiful, uh, the, the stations of the cross garden. Yes. I, I think we're going to, we're going to go there. We're going to take a walk through you and I, as well as the rose garden. Right. Uh, both of these, they were just gardens. All the statues were falling apart. And uh, I had someone in the parish painted all the statues, cleaned it up. I had some of the ladies come, they cleaned up the garden. And at least now it's used, especially during the warmer months. When we come back, Monsignor Jamie is going to take us on a tour of the stations of the Cross Garden and the Rose Garden. Rose Garden. So come on back. So Anthony, this is our Stations of the Cross Garden. We cleaned it up here and we cut down all the bushes. We put in this rock garden. There are beautiful uh, planters here with some flowers. We uh, put a nice, beautiful fountain. It's amazing how you redid the, the whole Stations yes. of the Cross. Yes, he highlighted, one of, someone in the parish did this and he highlighted them and he just highlighted the, 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 cru the, the cross. The, the cross, the so you can see the wooden cross. Right, in all of the different stations. Wow. The Rose Garden is on the other side. And what we do here is that uh, the Rose Garden, every Mother's Day, mm -hmm. we dedicate it to all of our mothers. Oh, that's nice. So since I did that, then I had to dedicate this to all of the fathers. So ah. Mother's Day, we remember all of the fathers. And we have a nice book, and they can enroll their father's name. And once a year, we pray for them on Father's Day. Go show me to the Rose sure. Garden. Come on, guys. We're going to go check out, we're gonna check out the Rose Garden. Thank you. You're welcome. So Anthony, this is our beautiful rose garden, and uh, like the uh, stations of the cross garden, I put benches in. We have here, we have the statue of the Sacred Heart, our Blessed Mother, we have St. Francis. Uh, so you opened it up right. for the people to come in and they can meditate and right. pray, and it's amazing. It, it's, just, it's a beautiful, beautiful garden. I put all roses wow. all around here. And of course, when all the roses are in bloom, it's a, a beautiful spot. I tell you, it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> so I just want to thank you again so much for everything that you taught me, you know, that I learned while being here because I never knew before, and to all our viewers. Now, if you guys have any questions about St. Bernard's Church, I mean, you could write into us. You could follow us or email us. Uh, you could get follow us on Facebook or Twitter, or you can write into us at 1712 10th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11215. Until next time, I'm Anthony Mangano for City of Churches with my senior Jamie from St. Bernard's and Breaking Bread. Please watch. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, and God bless you. I have to tell you. Right?